Welcome to another mythology video. When it comes to mathematics, most people think that all the really good and simple stuff has already been discovered a long, long time ago, right? Triangles, Pythagoras, all this stuff has been picked over for thousands of years. How can anything truly nice and easy have gone unnoticed until now? Well, not so. <laughs> Let me tell you about a wonderful little discovery about triangles that was only made 10 years ago. Here we go. Start with any triangle. Mark the midpoints of the sides and draw in the three medians of the triangle that end in these midpoints, these guys here. And looks out the saving, the three medians always intersect in a point. And so the medians chop the triangle into six smaller triangles, usually all different in shape and size. This fact has been known since time immemorial and mathematicians have been staring at this diagram for just as long. Now, highlight two neighboring triangles, uh, those two. Insert a hinge right there at that midpoint and now fold up. All right, nice. Let's do the same with these two triangles here. Actually, wait, before I fold things up a second time, can you already guess where all this is going? Yes? No? Well, if we fold things up now, we get exactly the same triangle as before. Have a look. Hmm. And now you can definitely guess what comes next, right? Yes, put in a hinge, fold up, and you get the same new triangle a third time. Ta-da! And that's the new discovery. Very simple and very beautiful, isn't it? Well, there is a bit more to it. Let's call the new triangle the folded triangle. The common side of the red and blue up there, that's a median of the folded triangle, right? Pretty obvious. And there's a second median and a third. Okay, now fold up the folded triangle. All right, so there's one, there's two, and there's three. Hmm. Great, now compare this new folded folded triangle to the original triangle. Notice anything special? Yes, the folded folded triangle is just a scaled down version of the original triangle. Interesting and very beautiful, isn't it? And it really looks like this was only discovered for the first time 10 years ago. Amazing, right? But of course, as with most mathematics, a lot more beauty is hiding in the why. And so let me also show you why all this works. Lots of nice aha moments ahead. And so make sure to stick around. Actually, we'll prove more than just the medians meeting in the centroid. We'll also show that the centroid splits every median in a long and a short part. And that long blue part is always exactly double the length of the short green part. There. The blue part is exactly twice as long as the green. Again, that's true for any median. The blue is always twice as long as the green. There. Blue is twice as long as the green. And again, blue is twice as long as the green. Here's a nice way to see why all this is the case. Scaling our triangle down by a factor of 3 gives this little triangle. And you've probably all seen this before. We can now tile the large triangle with copies of the little triangle like this. Okay, here's one of the medians of the little gray triangle at the bottom. Now from the tiling it's clear that if we extend this median up, we end up with the median of another little triangle, that one here. There, extend. And extending further, we get the median of the little triangle at the very top. And now, of course, together, the medians of the little triangles form the median of the large triangle. And this median passes through the special point right in the middle of the tiling. And the blue part of the median is twice as long as the green part. And, of course, the same is true for all three medians. Easy. Okay. So medians all meet in the point right at the center of the tiling and are all cut by this point in the ratio of 1 to 2. Proof complete. Super nifty, right? Actually, with these two properties under our belt, it's very easy to now also prove that the three ways of folding give the same folded triangle and that, furthermore, the folded folded triangle is a scaled down version of the original triangle. Here we go. If these three parts really all fold up to the same triangle, then obviously all three parts, red, green and blue, have to have the same area, exactly one third of the area of the original triangle. 
Let's first see why that is true. It's really easy. The area formula for triangles is 1 half base times height. Well then, the blue triangle and the original triangle have the same base. And because of the 1 to 2 ratio in which the medians are cut by the centroid, it's clear that the blue triangle's height is one third that of the original triangle. And therefore, also the area of the blue triangle has to be exactly one third of the area of the original triangle. And of course the same is true for the red triangle and the green triangle. Nice! Now, have you ever done any origami before? For example, have you ever folded a paper crane? Well, when you unfold the crane, you get this interesting crease pattern, which really is the blueprint for the crane design. Similarly, our median intersection pattern is a blueprint for everything that happens in our triangle folding adventure. Everything that we come across in terms of little triangles, distances and angles is present in this blueprint. Let's have a closer look. Let's first highlight the angles around the centroid. Well, these two opposite angles are the same. <laughs> so are these, and these, and these, and so on, all the same. Okay, now any other angle visible in this diagram is composed of the angles in the middle. For example, let's take one of the angles at the bottom, that one there. Put in a parallel to the bottom line through the centroid. And so the angle we are interested in is equal to the orange angle plus the green angle. Pretty obvious, right? Another example, this angle here. After drawing this parallel here, it's clear that our angle is equal to the gray angle plus the blue angle. Doing this angle chasing for the whole diagram gives this. Pretty spectacular, huh? <laughs> Reminds me a little bit of an Australian Aboriginal dot painting. Okay, get ready for an aha moment. Let's do the folding. There are one, two and three. Okay, these are the three folded up triangles. They all look the same, but to be sure that they really are, let's check the angles at the vertices. There, all the same and all the same and the same. <laughs> and since we already checked that all three triangles also have the same area, we can be sure that all three triangles are congruent, that all three triangles are the same. Okay, now let's fold a second time. There we go. One and two and three. <laughs> we already know that these triangles are all the same, but we still need to check that this folded folded triangle is similar to the original triangle. For this, we have to check that corresponding angles are the same again. Okay, let's check, checking, checking, checking. Ooh, well, looking good, still looking good. Well, definitely looking good. <laughs> Beautiful, proof complete. Now, let me show you the folding action again in a slightly different way. As you'll see, in a way, folding a triangle is really just turning it inside out with a bit of scaling down thrown into the mix. And then folding again, turns things inside out again and returns us to the original triangle. We're back to where we started from. So folding is really just a nifty way of turning a triangle inside out. Here are a couple more interesting observations. First, isosceles triangles always fold into isosceles triangles. There's an isosceles triangle, fold, zip, <laughs> another isosceles triangle, and an equilateral triangle folds into another equilateral triangle. What about right triangles? Well, let's see. Hmm, that's a right triangle. Folding a right triangle does not give a right triangle. However, since folding turns triangles inside out, we can still find the right angles in the middle of the folded triangle. There, the right angles. I can see some of you serious triangle lovers bouncing up and down in your seats. Being well versed in the ways of the triangle, you will have immediately spotted another way of seeing pretty much at a glance why the three folded triangles are the same. Here's that second proof that quite a few of you will have come up with on the spot. 
by yourself. This one takes just a couple of seconds. Color in the long median parts like this. Let's fold. So two of the sides of this folded triangle coincide with two of the colored parts, yellow and orange. What can we say about the remaining black side at the bottom? Let's unfold again. Well, we know that this green segment is half as long as the blue, right? Remember that? <laughs> but then the remaining side of the folded triangle consists of two copies of the green and so the remaining side is as long as the blue side. Nice! And so the different sides of this folded triangle are just the three colored long median parts of the original triangle. Since it's the same for all folded triangles, all have to be the same. How nice is that? <laughs> Finally, here's the article by Lee Sellows about his discovery in the December 2014 issue of the Mathematics magazine. Just one page. And so it's really possible, even today, after thousands of years of triangle spotting, to discover new simple and beautiful mathematics. And that's all for today's mini mythologer. Well, I flat out his work at uni at the moment and so didn't have time for a Kurosawa length mythology video. Still a very nice topic I think and I hope you enjoyed it. Oh and by the way, which of the two proofs do you prefer and why? The dot painting leisurely one, which really takes in a lot of the sides of the beaten track, or the one glance one at the end that goes straight for the kill? Let me know in the comments.